So today I'm going to talk about forgiving the self for being human. The process of self-initiation. Self-discovery is what, we all, what was already there. The darkness can be made conscious. We build the unreal self who keeps us from the truth that could get us rejected. True self-knowledge is only possible when the all the self-judgment is stopped and we break free from the idealized version of the self. Self-revolution is breaking free from the ego's sanctuaries. This includes the heart, the mind, and the pelvis. And seeing things from new angles, those old angles lose their grip on us. We're pointed to where new light can come in. Problems transform into opportunities with no more catch-22. 22 is a big number. It is the 12 tribes with the 10 dimensities, as a friend of mine calls it. I always grew up hearing it called dimensions or luminosities. And um, it's also the number of the Hebrew letters of the alphabet. When we're seeing through our old blockages, we are also being seen through. We learn to see what drives behind the thoughts, the speech and the action that's coming in and going out. We learn to see the roots of these things. And by being something different, we become world change agents. In other words, I will change the world around me when I change my inner world. I'll be seen in a new way and that's also part of this work. That's why I call this here self-initiation because self-discovery, self-revolution and seeing through. Now, what's not healthy for me? In this angle, the ways to keep the old pattern stuck is shaming needing help persuading me to have less compa self-compassion, informing me people gossip about me. Now, we do this to ourselves, or we surround ourselves with people who do this. Um, needing too much aff affection, positive feedback. Going inward feels more whole. No accountability, sorry, thank you, or good job. And when I say going inward feels more, more whole, I mean others who tell me not to share the true self they say no just be whole by yourself but be for me what I want you to be and I'm um, saying needing too much positive feedback or affection is when I'm with people who constantly need reassurance or I feel the need to constantly need reassurance it means I'm not in alignment with true self state of being um, inflames or irritates my nervous system this is like a physical one it's not good for me um, being around gossip or People who love to always give advice or an attitude of superiority or people who have a focus where they keep going to the negative. It's like a deflector. Withholding love to have power or attention. Withholding attention to have power in the struggle. And it's also like a punisher, silent treatment or avoidance. A triangulating tendency with jealousy. So kind of getting one and then getting the other. Um, somebody who's kind of like a 24-7 medicine user. So not to say that that's bad or good, but it's not good for me to be around somebody who says they need medicine to live, to be alive. And um, that kind of, uh, when I say medicine, I mean self-medicating. I mean one who medicates their self, not necessarily with um, the help of a doctor, but it's very easy to get a doctor to prescribe what we want um, if we come with that need of I need to be medicated to live. Most people on medication are trying to find alternative ways to enjoy being alive besides for um, just totally numbing their self with medication. And obviously everybody's in their own position. Some people need medication just for their heart to work or for their breath to pump. I'm not going into that right now. Rejecting or discarding in a cruel objectifying way. Treating people like they're objects and being cruel. Um, this goes without saying, but it's it's something that because I grew up with um, feeling rejected and discarded a lot and objectified and being um, taught to be okay with cruelty, I actually have a little bit of a blind spot here. Somebody who chooses to be in a relationship or lives with their ex by a choice, um, giving always with an agenda, not selflessly, selflessly or generously, pointing out flaws instead of introspecting and seeing how I can change my environment, I don't have to be around it, or I don't have to be around them, um, telling people what they should or shouldn't do, or people telling me that, and some ideas I had um, are that, of, of thoughts to, to fill the space with, when we take away these, you know, 
anchors where you know the the ego is not the lord of the of the microcosm it should be of the little world the ego is in charge of our little world but it should be a servant of a bigger world because the spirit is the driving force of our ideas our spirit is our ideation so when where we do idealize it is the power of the spirit that allows us the ego to do that so instead of the ego using that power to idealize what we think is is best for ourselves so these ideas i'm saying are to fill the space of of the spirit easy path is hard enough doing it the easy way is hard enough slow progress is fast enough making progress even slow is fast enough replacing the negative with the positive not just taking away negative but replacing it with positive accepting not knowing or understanding trusting that more will be revealed as needed when appropriate choosing purposefully to see good there's a guy who talks about the six thinking hats he says you know intelligence is a car thinking is the skills to drive a car we have different hats we have a creative hat we have a critical hat we have a you know a an information neutral hat and he goes through all six of them and one of them is a yellow hat where we purposefully choose to see the benefits and this is he says very hard to do in this society and we've got to do that this is an idea this is a spiritual idea um, uplifting others making life better for them this will solve many of our problems with guilt with shame with self-esteem with powerlessness just uplifting others and making life better. This is some people who become like kind of addicted to charity and volunteer work um, in a good way. The true nature can always take a step back and witness some stillness. So becoming one big ear and first listening to the inner sounds going on in the body or in the mind, producing by focusing, um, just by looking, by seeing that as a productive effort. Being a great artist is being useful. It's finding ways of things to transmit information. It's using media to connect a invisible viewer or a reader with your contribution or a listener, if it's music or an audience member, somebody you don't know, or even if you know them, you are not them. Some transmission takes place. So being useful. Um, witnessing the drama, the thoughts, the feelings, the clarity, the crazy, as I'm not ready if I'm blind. So it's a gift to see those things. You know, we, we're only ready once we see. Not needing to be seen, thought of as beautiful. Instead, knowing the value it, um, is in being, often in being invisible as a superpower is, like I said, being seeing through is also to be seen through. That's why they say the evil eye is when you're judging people, people are seeing you in that way. And it's just the nature of reality. So that's an opinion that um, I also share that when we're viewing people with a lot of judgment, we're actually see, being seen with judgment by others. So instead of wanting to constantly be seen as beautiful, instead looking at others as beautiful and even Seeing it as being invisible is a superpower because then we can become. We can become something. We can become beautiful, even more beautiful. We can become much more than needing to be beautiful. So it's a real superpower there. And so now in terms of self-initiation, I've got to look at some of my identifications and see where they come from. So one is I want to enjoy my privacy. And I encourage anyone to do this too. And... What do I learn from that? I learn actually maybe a few things. So first of all, I learned that sometimes when I didn't have a voice, I had to learn how to write my thoughts down. My father didn't necessarily learn how to communicate well. And um, he had a lot of courage and imagination. And I would say that in, in giving boundaries, giving boundaries with courage and imagination. I'm not gonna need it and I'll see what happens when I don't need it, I'll just be. I won't get the attention, I'll feel lonely, so lonely. And feeling you know, judged and putting those preferences and judgments away and allowing myself to not have the other um, keep going when it's too much but learn how to say no and, and, and be able to express when I feel overwhelmed or disregarded or, you know, invaded, rushed, 
again, lonely and validated. These are all ways in which I can communicate and also honor by having those feelings be acceptable. Starting from where I am, as Pema Chodron says, starting from where I am, this is it. So wanting to enjoy my privacy actually has roots in all of these. In learning, you know, my father went away for school and I also did at a very young age. And that disruption, my mother moved a lot when she was young because she was um, not financially, her family was not financially independent. And so just for relief of having a voice, I recognize that privacy is a space to, um, to regroup, to recenter, to check in with myself, see how I feel, to pause, to regard myself, to let go of everything that's kind of tentacles coming in, to be with my own company, and to validate myself, to witness my own courage and imagination as necessary so that I could either get better company or create better boundaries, and um, also to be able to say stop or be able to take some space to myself when I do need, when there's an other, when there's somebody who's um, responsible for me feeling like I can't enjoy. And um, moving through this, realizing that the deeper root to that is feeling like this uh, energy of, of the father is, 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 I didn't come from my father. So there's a sense of not feeling the, the deep, I want to call it clean, pure, just un, it's just uncontaminated, uncorrupted, unperverted, completely just completely natural connection.